new flicks, new flip resets, new everything. How does this keep happening? I never thought I'd be making a new mechanics of 2023 video, but here I am. I have six new mechanics to talk to you about today, saving some of the more recent stuff for last. We'll get to that later. First up is the Luther flick. This one is interesting because it's such a basic idea, but somehow no high level players have thought to utilize it consistently. Back in May, a player named Luther uploaded this short montage of him using this weird type of flick that somehow pinches the ball with the ground and sends it flying forward super quickly. Just by watching, you could probably already understand how it works. It's really not that hard, which is great. After just a few minutes of practicing and free play, I already got a couple good ones. It's definitely going to take a lot more practice before I'm totally comfortable with it, but I'm on track to get there, which is pretty cool. The way it works in detail is starting with the ball rolling in front of your car at roughly the same speed. Already a really common situation. You simply jump, turn, and air roll slightly so that your car is in this position here. From there, it's literally just a back diagonal flip. If the spacing is right, you'll send the ball flying way faster than you could with any other mechanic in this position. I also went ahead and tested this out to see how good it is for like breakaway situations. On unlimited boost, it is indeed the fastest way to score. Like it's faster than a hook shot. It's faster than just speed flipping all the way through. So then I tested it again when you're starting with only 30 boosts, which isn't very much. And still the same thing. It's definitely the fastest way to score from a breakaway, at least when the ball's starting right in front of you like this. Not to mention, this doesn't even take into account the confusion factor that this mechanic has. I'm definitely gonna keep practicing this because it's really not that hard based on what I've tried so far, and it's definitely super useful in game. Before getting into the rest of the mechanics, today's video is sponsored by the Esports World Cup. For those of you not on Twitter or X, you might have missed a huge announcement from a few weeks ago. Starting next year, Gamers 8, which you might recognize, is becoming the Esports World Cup. I've talked about Gamers 8 before on this channel because they already hosted a massive esports event earlier this year, and they're one of the best tournament organizers out there. But starting in summer 2024 in Riyadh, they're taking an even bigger step up from before. I feel like the name Esports World Cup is quite an ambitious title to live up to, but after looking at the details and knowing that it's Gamers 8 running this thing, it definitely confirms the hype for me. Eight weeks of competition across all genres of competitive games, unique formats that you rarely see, if ever, in other events. There's so much to look forward to, and it's all starting in less than a year. To stay up to date, be sure to follow their Twitter using the link below, and keep an eye out for more announcements. Thanks again to the Esports World Cup for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to the mechanics. Next up is the Double Zap Dash. You heard that right. It's not an official name, but that's what I'm calling it because I think it makes the most sense. If you saw last year's video about 2022 mechanics, then you already know what a normal zap dash is. It's this mechanic that allows you to get a free wave dash after a speed flip or when you're landing from an aerial. It's especially useful in ones because there's a lot of situations where you're racing an opponent to the ball, and this mechanic gives you just a tiny extra speed boost that would normally just be impossible. But that was new last year, and it's pretty commonplace now for a lot of players. This year, all the way back in January, Zapatos actually uploaded another clip saying, notice anything weird, where in the clip, it looks like he somehow gets two different dashes. If you look and listen closely, he definitely gets an initial speed boost when he lands, and then another speed boost after from what we know as a normal zap dash. He starts the clip with zero boost and very little momentum on the back wall, and then within a second or two gets immediately up to max speed. This thread actually continues with Halfway Dead replying a few times. And from what I can gather from it, it seems like what's happening here is a normal forward wave dash as your front wheels touch the ground. So that's already a little different. And then within milliseconds after you do a normal jump, which somehow only lifts the front wheels. So you can then do another wave dash. So pressing A three total times to get two dashes back to back. If that doesn't make sense, uh, I'm sorry. It's seriously so insane that this is even possible. Even I have a hard time comprehending it in real time. After seeing this, I tried doing this in free play for a while and the only version of it I could get was this other type where you wave dash on your front wheels, just the same, but then you flip cancel it with perfect timing and then wave dash again. It's not the same exact technique according to this thread, but it accomplishes essentially the same thing. I have no clue how, but Zapato said that he thinks he could get this to like 90% success rate, which is just ridiculous because the timing is, I I can't even fathom it. But in situations like what Zapato showed us, where you're like low on a wall with no boost, it's super common. That happens like multiple times a game. This is something special and definitely a big deal if more people get it consistent. Next up is the Amelix jump. This will just be a short one because it's actually a refined version of a mechanic that already exists. If you guys remember the Licks jump from last year, it's based off of that. Basically, it's a way to jump off the wall, but still retain your flip to use whenever you want. It's really technical and requires a lot of precise timing. If you want to learn more about it, I'll link my video in the description. I already made like like a full breakdown of it. But anyway, in September, a player named Amalox posted on Reddit basically saying that while everyone else gave up on the licks jump pretty quickly, he actually kept practicing it for more than a year. And the results of his practice are pretty insane. Check this out.
As you can see, this refined version of the licks jump is basically just as quick as a normal air dribble setup, which is pretty cool. A problem back then with the normal licks jump was that your car would be facing the complete wrong direction for a moment as soon as you left the wall, but Amalox has clearly fixed that. If this gets fully consistent, this is a huge deal. But that's also exactly the problem. While Amalox has definitely perfected the setup when he gets it right, even after a year of practice, he still hasn't gotten it fully consistent. I think that's also why all of these clips that we've seen are just in training still. In the post, he says he gets it about one in every three tries, which is definitely a lot better than anyone else in the world. But still, for it to be like a true competitive mechanic, you have to be able to do it almost every single time. So for now, I think this will continue to just stay in the freestyling world unless someone does come along and gets it fully consistent, which may or may not happen. Next up, let's check out this crazy flick that someone made. He calls it the Suffo flick. It reminds me a lot of the Evo or Wizard flick from last year because at first it looks like just a failed flick, but then the power comes out and it totally catches the defender off guard. To do a Suffo flick, you basically start with a dribble on your car, then to initiate it, you do a small jump, and then you have to turn, air roll, and boost so that your car is in this position here. At this point, you're probably like, uh, dude, is, is this a joke? because it literally looks like you're boosting completely away from the ball. And no, it's actually not a joke because apparently this is the perfect position where all you need to do is back diagonal flip and you'll actually send the ball flying perfectly to the top shelf. Don't ask me how someone figured this out. I have no idea. <laughs> in full motion, this seriously looks so stupid that it's amazing. It just baffles me how you can be so far away from the ball and then one flip later, you're launching it top corner. What's even weirder about this is that it's actually not even as hard as it looks. When I tried learning it, it actually didn't even take that long before I got my first one. Fortunately, its creator made a tutorial for it, so that definitely helped a bit. It reminds me a ton of when I first learned the breezy flick, because you're basically just doing one small pop and then you do some crazy maneuver and then the power comes out at the end, which is also why I can confirm Firm, this is learnable and reasonable to get consistent. I'd love to see some really good players try to learn this because it's such a fancy move and it's actually pretty fun once you're comfortable with it. Let's talk about something that just came into the scene a month ago. This one is called the Purple Shot. If you've played Rocket League Sideswipe before, which is the mobile version of Rocket League, then you probably already know what a real Purple Shot is because it's literally a mechanic built into the game. In Sideswipe, when you jump off the ball with your wheels, it actually launches it forward with some purple sparks. Unfortunately though, this is just a Sideswipe thing and it's not possible in real Rocket League. Or so I thought. Just last month, a member of Pulse Clan named Leo Gabin, or Leo Gabin, I don't know how to say his name, he posted a clip from an actual ranked game with some really weird physics. Take a look. It almost looks fake by the way the ball moves, because if you've gone for flip resets before, you know that backflipping after the reset does literally nothing to the ball. But Leo has somehow found a way to change that. I don't even know how. Apparently, all the way back in 2019, this was also discovered by someone named Endless Cookies. He managed to do it a couple times in training, and it was actually featured in one of Musty's videos back then. But there was no consistency, and it was pretty much fully forgotten about, at least until now. Leo uploaded a tutorial to his YouTube channel, and it seems like for this mechanic to work, it requires a specific angle for the reset and very very specific timing of the flip. This of course inspired me to try it for myself and after practicing it for quite a while, I did it a total of zero times. This literally feels impossible to me. And honestly, I don't even know where the power is supposed to come from. I feel like the more I watch it back, the more confused I get. But then again, in his tutorial, Leo literally does it a few more times in free play while just talking casually. And he scored it in other ranked games as well. It's rare these days that even after watching a tutorial, I'm still dumbfounded as to how a mechanic mechanic works, and it's no fault of Leo at all. It really just shows you how impressive it is that he found a way to replicate something that many experienced players can't even do once. I'm kind of indifferent about this mechanic because I'm a little annoyed I literally couldn't do it at all after so much practice, but it's exciting that we're still finding new things about this game's physics, like that still blows my mind. And last but not least, we have the Jerry reset. This one is an interesting one. In September, an SSL player named Jerry just ironically posted this clip where he did this weird version of a double flip reset. It's almost like a wave dash on the ball, but his car stays in like a perfect position to follow it up again. Normally on double resets, you'd have to like pre-flip into it or just use stalls, which don't really give the ball much power. But this is almost like a more controlled technique of getting that second reset. Now, as I said, this was an ironic post. Usually when people do stuff like this, especially SSLs, they already know that it's total luck and they could probably never do it again if they tried. Even Jerry himself said it's literally impossible to recreate. So usually you'll just see these things get brushed off pretty quickly. But the reason I'm still talking about it is because literally the next day, he managed to do it again, not once, not twice, but three times on purpose. 
That's what got me thinking. Like, this might be a legit thing. It moves the ball in a unique way and puts your car in a strong position to follow it up. But yeah, only time will tell if someone manages to truly get good at them. And to be clear, this is definitely one of those mechanics that has been done in the past by other people. Some other high-level players replied that they have done this on accident a few times, but never on purpose. If we're being realistic, you could probably find old versions of a lot of these mechanics we've talked about today if you just looked hard enough. But what really gets people talking is when they start doing it on purpose. Like, the point is, it's pretty common for people to accidentally do new things, but it's not actually worth taking seriously until someone figures out a way to replicate it. That's what I think sets these mechanics apart, so I'm going to keep an eye out for them for sure. Thank you for watching. Uh, let me know what you think about each of these mechanics. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Other than that, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.